Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this Sunday night, end of the weekend. It is the Earth Master here with a quick update video on this Sunday night, January 28th, 2024, about 11.31 p.m. here at California time. Uh, latest activity, well, did see some movement out here across the Reno area earlier uh, this afternoon, uh, in fact, a 3.7 earthquake here south of Reno. This was upgraded from a 3.5 and upgraded from deeper movement to a little bit shallower earthquake activity there across the area of Reno, Nevada. Now, a little bit of shaking going on out here in the Reno, Nevada area. Um, far as any potential larger scale movement out here, I think it's possible uh, not looking at anything um, major, but I do want to bring up uh, the earthquake catalog book here over the last, uh, well, let's go back, you know what, let's go back in time, back to the year 1000. And we're going to draw a little rectangle, a little square out here across the Reno, Nevada area and take a look at historical earthquake activity. It's a little cool feature that the USGS has out here in terms of... Uh, you know, searching the earthquake uh, catalog book. And uh, this doesn't show, obviously, every single earthquake that's taking place out here, but it gives a good uh, good amount. So, um, out here in the last, uh, well, I put it back to the year 1000, and it doesn't show a whole lot. Uh, it does show some large earthquake activity out here, though. We did see a 6.4 earthquake back in 1914. Uh, South Reno area. Um, that, that's a pretty decent earthquake. Also uh, 6.0 in that same area. We zoom in here. We can see a couple of earthquakes right on top of each other. 19, 1914 um, in April and February it looks like. So uh, yeah, obviously earthquake activity in the larger scale department can take place out here. 6.4 back in 1869, right? We've been pretty complacent. I think we have been complacent here uh, in terms of our um, our time here uh, on this planet. Uh, we get used to the daily routines, right? Going to work, going to school. You know, we haven't had any earthquakes when I was a kid. Uh, well, we had one way back then. You know, we get very complacent uh, in terms of the potential of large earthquake activity out here. In Reno, Nevada, uh, it's, it's no stranger to large earthquakes, no doubt. Uh, 6.4 would probably do, uh, I think, a decent amount of damage out there across the Reno, Nevada area if that were to take place right now. Right, and look at this uh, earthquake right here, uh, a 6.4 back in 1914. Right? Imagine that taking place right now, literally within miles of all the casinos and stuff like that. So, you know, it's uh it's good to pay attention to history. If you get if you forget history and you get complacent, uh, then things become uh, an issue for you. It becomes an issue for society. So, we don't want to forget history. We want to remember it and learn how to um basically evolve from it or continue from it uh so right now you know a little bit of activity out there across reno just a little friendly reminder that large earthquakes can take place out here across the reno nevada area all right uh look it out elsewhere obviously you know anywhere you live out here right major fault system major pl plate boundaries there could be some significant earthquakes. So it's just uh, education. I think education is key in terms of uh, helping those that are not aware of what is capable. Uh, 3.1 out there earlier this morning in the Westmoreland area, Southern California. Uh, no major swarming going on. Nothing uh, major for a spectacular earthquake activity uh, there in California for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, fairly quiet, but I do want to double check out here because when it shows quiet activity, well, <laughs> that means things are kicking up. This is, this is basically what I'm talking about here. Um, 
if you look at the USGS map, you wouldn't have a clue uh, as to what's going on out here. Not a single earthquake, right? Everything's super duper quiet out there in the 24 hour period. But if you look at the local seismic activity here, you would see that that is not the case uh, across the area of Yellowstone. A couple of earthquakes here in the last couple of hours, probably under the 2.0 range. Uh, but that uh, is still earthquake activity, right? You can see it showing up there at Hebgen Lake, Holmes Hill, Maple Creek, uh, Purple Mountain area showing that earthquake activity as well. So there's earthquake activity, but the USGS is not showing it. And I, I wish I could change that. I really wish that somebody uh, that is in charge of showing the earthquake activity throughout the weekend uh, would at least put up some of this smaller earthquake activity. Whether it's, you know, I get what they're get, I, I get what they're saying in terms of uh, not wanting to produce the uh, earthquake activity unless it's above two point five. I get it because they don't want to fear monger. They don't want to show a lot of uh, large earthquake activity um, before reviewing it. But I think it's necessary. I think that the USGS here. Uh, I'm probably going to. Uh, write an email to these folks here maybe uh, soon uh, and I, I'm going to recommend that they at least report the preliminary data earthquake activity out here for Yellowstone and other areas out here across the Pacific Northwest and then review them as they come into the office Monday morning or whenever their uh, normal office hours um, come about uh, because these guys are paid by taxpayer money right uh, my taxpayer money, your taxpayer money. These guys are government officials and they work for us. So I think they should provide the uh, data out here. There's earthquake activity occurring. The preliminary earthquake data system should pick up this earthquake activity. It's in the uh, probably below the two range. Um, let's get that happening. Let's get this uh, going here because it's earthquake activity. Why should we have to wait till someone reviews this, right? there's a huge swarm say if there's a huge swarm of twos and ones out here say hundreds of earthquakes we would never know about it until someone gets in uh into the office monday morning so i think these guys should um probably review their standards uh, in terms of their preliminary earthquake data reporting system uh put it down to instead of 2.5 put it down to 1.0 all right, that way we at least see earthquake activity coming up here on the on the graph, because you know USGS, right? Where's your name at? Where is your qualification? Where is your your word, right? The USGS USGS stands for something, right? Make that count. If you're if you're reporting earthquake activity out here, and then not reporting earthquake activity out here, kind of it kind of it, it doesn't make sense. So. Let's uh, let's make that happen, right? There's earthquake activity. Make that happen. So, I'll uh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm kind of hesitant about it, but I I kind of want to email some folks here about this and maybe see if we can't get that uh, preliminary earthquake reporting system down a little bit. You know, it shouldn't be so high. If there's a one pointer, two pointer, why not show it up here? Why does it have to be 2.5 and above? You know, who who is the person that says 2.5 and above uh, for the weekend only? I, I don't get it. All right, uh, let's back out of here. You know, I'm not in charge of the USGS. I kind of wish I was because I would make some major changes. Trust me, I would make some major changes out here. No doubt. And, and, and as a taxpayer, right, these guys are basically under my command. I am their boss, if you really think about it. And you're their boss as well. If you are a taxpayer out here across the states, um, these folks working uh, underneath the taxpayer money, you guys are working for us, right? So you guys need to make this count. You guys need to... Uh, uh, definitely makes a, a little bit of changes out here. Um, you know, and a lot of people like to uh, state that, well, you have to go to meetings, you have to go to council city meetings, you have to go to government official meetings to make changes. You know, it's like, come on, dude, just report the earthquakes as they are occurring. 
Common sense. All right. Way out there in left field. All right. How about those Niners? All right. Um, far as the earthquake activity out there in the Kilauea volcano, well, yes, obviously a little bit of earthquake activity out here. And if we look at the last oh, couple days here of earthquake activity, uh, we've seen a, a pretty decent earthquake swarm out here. And I guarantee you, and this is the thing here, they're, they're only showing 124 earthquakes in the last seven days. That's, that is baloney. <laughs> <laughs> that's baloney uh or maybe uh you know i don't know baloney i guess is the word um and i'm going to show you why i am going to show you their own data out here and this is why i think we need to see a change out here in terms of reporting the earthquake activity 2.5 is baloney uh their preliminary earthquake data uh system out here is baloney Let's check it out. Let's zoom in here across the area of uh, supposedly, what do we got? Supposedly 124 earthquakes in the last seven days. That's very minimal to what we are going to see right now. All right. So here's the past 12 hours, right? Past 12 hours. Do you want to count? Do you guys want to count every single one of these earthquakes out here? Probably not, right? So that's the last 12 hours. I would say, looking at the last 12 hours, we have 126 earthquakes just in the last 12 hours. Um, if you were to go back and look at the last 24 hours, what do you guys think there? You think there's a little bit more? Probably, right? So these, uh, these little earthquakes that are showing up here on the graph um, are just preliminary, right? 124. There's probably at least three times they're probably looking at 124 times three right i don't know what it is I'm not gonna go look but it's a lot so there's a lot more earthquake activity occurring out here across the uh the uh kilauea volcano than what is being reported um let's see what we got here in terms of um uh tilt meter out here across the uh summit region the uwe it's definitely taking a turn for the downturn in terms of deflation but we've seen a lot of earthquake activity here recently that could be a sign here uh, that could definitely be a sign here of uh pressuration maximum in terms of the magma potential below the surface here uh, and of course when you have the pressure maximum taking place here the the amount of pressure that is able to withstand the magma below um that's when we get that 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 pressurization here and earthquake activity can obviously occur um and that could show the level of um of inflation either leveling out or downturning in deflation so i i think it's kind of i think it's uh leaning towards um definitely some some potential activity here soon in terms of eruptive fissure activity um the usgs let's see if they've been, said anything about it here um hvo kilowatt daily update put out today it's you know it's not erupting over the past day. Seismicity picked up in the South Caldera region, but has remained steady. Um, the Kilauea Summit region remains pressurized. Uh, an eruption could occur uh, in the future with little or no warning. So, you know, it's uh, I don't see any key wordings out here that would tell me that these guys are concerned about an imminent eruption. But uh, with the amount of earthquake activity that's taking place out here, uh, I think it's just a, a matter of time before we see activity really stir up in terms of uh, some eruptive fissure, fissure activity out here across the uh, Kilauea volcano. It's just it's pointing towards it. There's a lot of earthquake activity. Tilt meter is going down. Um, it's there. It's definitely there. So uh, how much longer? I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how much longer we're going to see that uh, continued pressurization there underneath the summit region. 
something we definitely have to watch here for sure. All right, uh, looking out across the world here in the graph, the flat earth model, uh, 6.5 earlier this morning, about one o'clock or so, 6, 6.5. That's, that's a pretty decent earthquake and very deep out there. No surface adjustment there following that earthquake. I'm very surprised, right? Look at that, 6.5. No subsequent shallow earthquake activity. That's very rare to see that. So uh, I think we need to keep an eye there on the South America region. Uh, 5.1 right now coming into the uh, area south of the Philippines. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, fairly quiet. There's not a whole lot going on out there for now. As uh, far as space weather activity, we did see some M-flare activity here recently. And in fact, we're looking at, uh, well, goodness, that's a, a fairly eruptive M-flare here on the map. Look at that, almost into the X-flare category. That's going to be an M6.8. Goodness, what's going on? That produced a little bit of a uh, proton event here on the southern hemisphere, also on the sunlit side of the Earth. Uh, seeing a little bit of the... Uh, effects of that as well now that's uh coming off of 3559 uh, it figures right doesn't it figure that as soon as these sunspots face away from the earth that uh, things start to amp up 3559 they're way out on the northwestern limb of the sun uh producing that large m flare not going to be geo effective at all but uh, goodness, it's, it's been that way for a little while here in Solar Cycle 25. These solar flares want to key up when they're not in the Earth-directed view. Almost like they're behaving. Uh, almost like they're being observed some, to an extent. Uh, which I think uh, things behave differently when they're being observed, right? So... Um, yeah, that is not facing the Earth. That's definitely uh, away from the Earth. That will not be geo-effective, so that's kind of cool. But uh, no effect here to Earth. No effect to the uh, solar um, forecast here in terms of the aurora activity. For a storm prediction center out here, things are very minimal, pretty quiet. Uh, look at the numerical model here does show um, increasing wet conditions out here across the uh, California area as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. Includes Southern California as well. Another storm system there as we head into next week. Next week. Not this week, but next week uh, into Southern California. And that's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say exactly what's going to happen far out, but it does look to remain uh, potentially wet out here across the west coast all right folks i'm going to get out of here philippines uh i think that's going to be that 5.1 showing up there let me double check here um yeah not showing up here across the usgs model but i think that's going to be the 5.1 right there on the globe that is showing up uh, fairly nicely there across the Philippines uh, station. Uh, aside from that, most of the seismograph stations there look fairly quiet. Catch you guys back out here Monday. Goodness, Monday. Is that a bad word? Hopefully I can say Monday here on the YouTube channel. <laughs> we'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. Have a good one.